everybody we're still laughing over here we're having fun before the camera even turns on because it's just san jose california it's bright and sunny in the new house check it out isn't this cool you know lance had to get like this this tapestry that he had to had to get look at this thing isn't this gorgeous isn't this gorgeous it's beautiful mm -mm -mm. it's learned by lauren faust too right there sweet princess celestia is gonna look over us to make sure everything goes right because this is a brand new setup. We're going wirelessly this time. Hopefully it doesn't burp or derp. Um, and Charlie's here. Charlie's always here. And I got a big box of comics right here. Look at this big box of comics right here. Comics, comics, comics. You know why? You know why I got a big box of comics with me today? Because we have the awesomeness that is Heather Nissa with us. Heather. Hello. Hello. And you and you pronounce my name with with such fanfare. I do because I've been doing it every every time you're at a convention. It's like <laughs> it's like it's like and, and guests are Nicole Oliver Heather. Everyone freaks yes. out. Everyone freaks out. And hopefully I'm saying it correctly. Over. Hopefully it's, I'm saying it correctly. Yes, it's new for it's, Oh, nice! I actually got it right. Oh my god. Yeah, you did wonderfully. Mm. You're, you're naturally inclined. Naturally inclined. I, I might make a job of this. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> So how was your day? Um, my day was uh, completely unproductive <gasps> and um, mildly glorious. Mildly? Um, I, I, you know, I'm a writer, so I get lots of good excuses to not do the things that I need to do. <laughs> that is in true. In a timely manner. In like, a timely you know, manner. Yeah. You just moved. I'm in the process of moving. So yes. suddenly I become really obsessed with, you know, grout. Grout, yes. And, we're, we're obsessed uh, with oak paneling or oak, yes. oak trim right now. Yes. Like the guys, so, whatever you've done with it. So. Yeah, I got a little work done. But, it's gorgeous. But, yeah. Just well, you know, when you can have someone who can do nice work in oh, your I know. house. I know. It's, it's, it, it's beautiful. My, the paint work and, and the oak work, it's going to be great when I get, because actually, this is, not, this is not my final set because I have not gotten to my final, you know, destination. But this is, this is good for now. Mm -hmm. hopefully, hopefully, the new set will be ready in a show or two. But. Like I said, we just moved in. So yeah. This well, is, how this, did your day go then? My, my day went awesome because I got the show ready for you about, geez, four hours ago. So me and my, my good pal Guns is, is in town. So we actually went to the gym. <laughs> so we oh, went dude, to the gym. And, the, the, you went to the gym yes. with a guy called Guns. Yes. Yes. We went to the gym and pushed some out. <laughs> yeah. So it was, it was awesome. awesome. Getting back to the gym. 
because I got a date with Destiny next. Bab's gone. It's coming. Trust me. Mm. I'll tell you soon. But Heather is a writer, comic writer for IDW's MLP series uh, and many more things. But she is the one who brought us our fan favorite nightmare rarity. Hey. Oh my! That that arc was so awesome. Thank you. Oh, I loved it. But let's start off with the question I ask everybody. The first awesome question I ask everybody comes on the show. Yes. What are some of the cartoons and comics you watched or read as a child or are still watching to this day? <laughs> um, that's a wonderful question. Um, I literally pretty much watched the exact same thing I've watched mm -hmm. since I was about <laughs> seven years old. Awesome. <laughs> um, uh, when, I, when I was growing up, um, I was super into anything involving um, Jim Henson Company. Oh, yes. Um, you know, Labyrinth is Labyrinth. a huge touchstone to me, uh, and Muppets. And um, when I was a little kid, I, I, I got to ask you this, though. I got to ask you this. Yeah. Dark Crystal, yes or no? Dark Crystal, I did not like as a child because it scared the bejesus. Oh, it was scary as bejesus when you were 10. So scary. So, so scary. So scary. Um, but I grew to love it um, yes. when I got older and was slightly less terrified yeah. of Skeksis. Though I will, I will tell um, a quick anecdote is that um, later okay. <laughs> I was actually, I was working at the Jim Henson Company and we mm -hmm. got to tour the creature shop. Uh -huh. And I got to see some Skeksy, oh. and I was a little bit terrified. <laughs> I was Skeksis? A little to Friends? Yes. Friends? No, don't run, please. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, I love that movie. Oh God, I love that movie. <laughs> As you could tell. <laughs> yes, and and there are um, Dark Crystal uh, comic books now. Yes, there are. Oh my God. Um, uh, done by Arkea, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I watch that stuff. I watch Fraggle Rock. Um, I really love my Muppet Babies, and uh -huh. uh, my dad um, had collected comics since he was a little kid mm -hmm. and um, held on to them. Uh, and I was not allowed to touch them for many, many years. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, sort of the story I always tell is that when we were little, I lived in a very small town. Uh -huh. And uh, our reward for being good um, at church was that we got to pick out a comic book or candy at the local store. Uh -huh. And so I would regularly get Muppet Baby comics. But mm -hmm. for some reason, I was also really fascinated with Spawn. So, so I'd the amazing be... crossover that just went through my mind. <laughs> There's got to be fanfic out there. Somewhere. Gonzo as Spawn. <laughs> I can so see it. Be, it would either be Spawn yes. or Muppet Babies. Spawn or Muppet Babies. That's awesome. I I've, I've actually have the first 50, 50 comics of Spawn in a box somewhere. Yeah, yeah. I, I really don't know yeah. why it did not terrify me. Weird. Yeah. The, the movies were weird. Oof. Yeah. 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 Um, you only started writing comics only a few years ago, 2010, uh -huh. if, my, if my information is correct, um, on Fraggle Rock for the That's Henson true. Company, as we just talked about. Uh, what What was it like to not only work uh -huh. for Henson after being such a big fan and getting that first job through them? Tell it us a bit was, about how that was. Yeah, it was um, unbelievably exciting and horribly terrifying. <sighs> Yeah. Yes. At this, at the same time, um, I had, you know, as I said, I grew up in a really small town mm -hmm. and, um, the extent of sort of what was, what you could dream to do in your life was, yeah. was not really big. Um, yeah. and I had never thought in a million years that I would, um, be a writer, okay. let alone get the chance to work for a company I adored. Mm -hmm. Um, I went out on a limb and applied uh, for uh, an internship at the Jim Henson Company after numerous career attempts at things that I had no interest in, <laughs> and uh, went out there and did an internship. And they really, they really loved me mm -hmm. and um, brought me in to do some work. And uh, when I left, the the guy in charge of publishing there was like, "Hey, you know, uh, do you have any ideas for any Fraggle Rock stories?" I had no clue what it was for. Uh -huh. Absolutely none, none. And I was just like, okay. And um, <laughs> typed out a couple ideas for short stories. Mm -hmm. And um, later on, he told me that it was for the comic and that there, he was just going to see if he could maybe get me a little story um, somewhere in the back of okay. the anthology. Uh -huh. And they ended up liking it enough that it was the first story. So it ended up being the, the first story, a Fraggle Rock story that they had done in 25 years. Yeah. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so that actually went really well. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, 
went on to lots more comic book work. Um, lots more. We're going yeah, to kind of, We're gonna yeah, talk kind about of, that. Um, cool, uh, kind of a cool little side on that is that um, in that first issue mm -hmm. of Fraggle Rock, um, I wrote the lead story. And then actually in My Little Pony, Big Circle of Life, um, Katie Cook wrote the backup in that. Oh, so, so cool. we, we worked together, as, uh, you know, at the very beginning of my career. Yeah. The uh, OK, here I've had a couple of people who are Muppet fans uh -huh. on the show. And I always ask this one. Muppets Tonight. Uh-huh. Yes or no, up or down? Oh, gosh. I was at a really weird place in my life when I watched that show. <laughs> um, it, was, it was definitely a thumbs down. But, you know, yeah. now I want to go back and watch it again. Yeah, just to see if you missed anything. Yeah. Right. If, you know, like, yeah. I was kind of that weird. I was like, you know, in my it's late It's that weird. Like, I think it was Disney takes over, right? You yeah, You don't want Disney yeah. to screw it up. To, right? Yep. And you don't want Disney to screw up the Muppets, but they did mm. this Muppets Tonight thing. Yeah. And I was like, it was kind of weird. And you wanted to love it so You bad. wanted to love it so badly. But it was sort of like Saturday Night Live in the 90s. Yeah. You know, once crazy. in a while they hit one out of the park, but man, were they swinging for the fences. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, okay, so you've not only worked for IDW, mm -hmm. but now you've done Scooby-Doo. Mm -hmm. You've done the Vampire Diaries for big, big, big publicist DC Comics. So now you're yeah. at DC Comics, right? Yeah. As a writer... Um, were you always looking to do comic work at the start or was it other things that got your race of juices going? You just fell into comics. Um, I, I totally fell into comics. Um, I'd always loved them. I never had actually seen them as a career path. Uh -huh. Um, I just happened to be the thing that, that landed first. Um, I loved writing, um, my entire life. Uh, my best friend, Kate, who also did some Fraggle Rock comics and I, um, we wrote when we were kids, we'd write crazy fanfic for 80s movies that we loved. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, and growing up, you know, uh, we would write everything. And then um, I went to school for everything but writing. And uh, <laughs> I, and I, I never thought it could be an actual career. Mm -hmm. um, and then I ended up landing in comics. And um, it's a really small kind of tight-knit community, which is really nice. Uh so work kind of begets work because you know the same people and everybody wants to work with people they trust and yes, love. And love and you prove yourself once you you can do the work, therefore yes. you get the work. Yeah. 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 Sort, my sort secret, a, yeah. yeah. My secret weapon is that I don't come from um, an art background or anything mm -hmm. like that. So I'm like crazy deadline girl. Uh -huh. Like like it's it's common knowledge that no one makes their deadlines ever in comics <laughs> except me. <laughs> like, and you and Stan Sakai. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, Stan's amazing. Stan's amazing. Yeah. It's, it's definitely like a job. Yeah. Stan, very, very Stan good. writes pencils, letters, inks, the whole comic, sends it off to his editor and she goes, yep, that's done. Sends it to the publisher. Yep. That's all she does. <laughs> she has a good job, right? Yeah. I've, I've, I've <laughs> talked to Stan a number of times. He says she's never changed anything. That's wonderful. It's like, well, it's, it's his book. It. It's like, she's just going to Send it off to the publisher, that's it. Yeah, he's a wonderful man. He, I love Stan. Um, I really hope good things for his wife right now because she's battling cancer. Yeah. But uh, Stan, we love you. Um, okay, so next question. Let me get a slide up there. Sorry for, for being a little slow because I've got things going on the computer. Um, when you sat down to write your first story for My Little Pony, The Nightmare Rarity Arc, <laughs> Were you given free reign to come up with your own concepts and story outlines, uh, or were there just a few handed to you by Hasbro and said, we'd like you to go in these directions? Um, at the very beginning, when um, Katie and I had gotten on board, um, they had a small list of, like, you know, three-word suggestions uh -huh. of characters to use or things that they might be interested in having us do. Okay. Um, and I know uh, Katie took some of hers from that. And uh, I kind of have a problem with return of, of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I, I tend to be of the notion that, you know, there's a gigantic world. Like maybe we should explore it a little bit. Yes. Um, so they did have a return to Nightmare Moon on the on the list. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was I love I love uh, Luna. Um, but I also wanted to do something that would be maybe a little bit new for the readers, especially mm -hmm. since in the comics we can kind of um, explore a bit more in different areas than they're doing on the show. Uh -huh. And uh, it really just kind of dawned on me that maybe I should ask 
to try this. So, so I wrote, I wrote a quick little pitch for it and sent it off to Bobby, our editor. And he actually thought that that Hasbro would go for it. Yes. So, um, and they did. And after that, um, it was one of the probably least painful writing gigs yes. I've ever had. It was, it was incredibly crazily well done. Thank from, you. From an old school comic guy where, <laughs> you know, and this is the next question. You would think that Rarity mm -hmm. would fall to the nightmare by her vanity. Right. But that really would do her, but it wasn't, was it? No. No, give us a bit, bit of background on what really made her fall. Um, well, you know, I think there's behind every sort of vain person slash mm -hmm. pony or, mm -hmm. or people with, you know, um, image. I don't want to say image issues because she doesn't have any issues with her image, but um, there's always this element of um, insecurity yes. and uh, uh, want. And so I wanted to get a little bit deeper than, than it just being, you know, mm -hmm. sort of the surface thing, because, you know, we all know that the, these characters are really well designed and, yeah. and um, have a lot of depth to them. Mm -hmm. uh, so I thought it'd be a great time to actually explore that a little bit yes. with my girl. Which is what I love about the comics because they're exploring the deep down yeah. the pony. I mean, it really, Rarity, and all artists, I mean, myself, when I was doing art in the 90s, and I actually mm -hmm. actually got some comic book work, it was all cool. like, it's not good enough, it's never going to be good enough, I'm never going to be Todd McFarlane. Right. <laughs> no one's going to be Todd McFarlane. But in, in, <laughs> in those days, you couldn't tell me that I wasn't going to be Todd McFarlane. Yeah. But it's like, you have to be yourself, right? Right. Write That's for yourself, do your art. Struggle. but the constant artist struggle. And a lot of that, I think, actually fell into the story too, mm -hmm. where Rarity is self-conscious about her her art yeah. on top of being self-conscious about, you know, everybody leaving her because of her generosity. Yes. So I, I think that was also played well in there too. Thank you. Yeah, it's definitely something, you know, like you were saying, like you mm -hmm. deal with it. I definitely deal with yeah, it. We um, deal with it. Yeah, we all deal with it in whatever we do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love it. Um, what do you feel influences um, your writing the most, uh, what you've seen in the past, what you see now, um, other writers, what, what are the things that are happening with your writing right now? The um, things that are influencing you the most? Uh, gosh, uh, old TV and movies really influence me. Um, I love um, film noir a whole bunch and um, I love 60s television oh, a yeah, lot. Uh, <laughs> so I watched, I was literally watching Gidget before, yeah. <laughs> before I and Anybody who's my age loves the monkeys or uh -huh. the monsters. Or, yes. I adore and, the monkeys. Yeah. I used to go see them in concerts all the time. Um, oh my. Yes. That's crazy. Yes. I had all their albums, yeah. but I was too young to actually go to any of their concerts. But I have vinyl. Yeah. It's great. Wow. Um, I, I got the vinyls too. <laughs> I had the mind. I think I got um, some, Yeah, mind. and I also, you know, uh, there's a really great, um, there's a show called Spectacle that everyone should watch. Oh. Um, it's an old, it's not old, old, but um, it's Elvis Costello hosting, mm -hmm. uh, talking to musicians. And oh, wow. um, I think it's on Netflix. But okay. uh, he has this interview with um, James Taylor, mm -hmm. and he compliments James Taylor on uh, on how his songs are so different and how they resonate so deeply with people. Mm -hmm. And um, James Taylor just kind of looks like befuddled. And he was like, oh, that's, you know, that's great to hear because I feel like I'm writing the same song over and over and over again. <laughs> and, and, and in a way that like struck me so profoundly because I do, I do kind of feel that way when I write, like, mm -hmm. um, like you're always trying to get over something. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, 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 yourself. It's been and said, it may... it's been said that there's like 12 true stories all mm -hmm. being retold different ways. Yes. Pretty and much. I and I I would agree with that, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it definitely rings true. Like I, I assume I'm probably trying to get over something constantly. Yeah, I, I do the same thing every time I turn on the camera. Um, but anyway, then we come to the bookworm arc, mm -hmm. um, and it's creative use of panel designs to tell the story. Um, whose idea was it to use the comic panel as an actual character in the story arc? Um, that was mine. Ooh. Um, but beautifully carried out by, by Amy. Um, Amy is, Amy Meberson is mm -hmm. a, a fantastic artist and an amazing storyteller within her, within her art. Mm -hmm. uh, when I went in with the story, it was really just a way for me to sort of massively use all of these backed up creative 
vignettes <laughs> in my head. And, um, and it seemed like uh, kind of using the comic in it of itself mm-hmm. would be fun for everybody to see. So, and she did a fantastic job of making it come to life and oh, yeah. actually make sense. Because when I was writing, I was like, "How is this even going to work?" It was, it was very <laughs> creatively done. I mean, it was it was really cool to see, you know, all of a sudden it's like the book starts repairing itself or tearing itself apart, depending on the panels. Mm-hmm. So this is one of the creative things. I'll tell people that don't read comics. That these are the things you need to look at for good comics because yeah. they take all of the things. And if you've never read uh, uh, Understanding Comics. Mm-hmm. Uh, Scott, um, can't remember his last name, but Understanding Comics is a book written by an independent comics guy who just explains everything about how to read, how you should read comics and what comic uh, creators use. Um, check it out someday. Yeah. But it's a really, really good book. Um, yeah, it, it's really, really cool. Also, the very interesting twist of the bookworm becoming the hero yes. in the end using the allegory that all readers all readers care they really are the bookworms at, at the heart of loving a story and wanting mm-hmm. to become the hero of the story right yeah so it was kind of a neat little wrap-up great thank you yes i live it. um <laughs> okay so next we go to pirates 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 so we get to meet Hoofbeard, mm-hmm. the pirate who's a little off his ticker yes. um has some problems yes has some problems uh but in the end he was only really searching for his one true love yeah. Um, it seems that when you, Breckel, and Hickley are all together, it's just going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah you, you, they're, 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 we, you know. A lot of fun. What's it like mm-hmm. in today's comic book market, and to, you know, as a writer, as a team, as an all-woman team? I mean, mm-hmm. it's just not common. I know. In, in comics. So what's it like working in an all-woman team versus having to write for, say, you know, a guy doing the art? Um. Really, it's uh, it's not that different. Other than that, um, the the female comic book people um, were all really tight. Mm-hmm. Like um, there aren't there aren't that many of us, <laughs> so uh, so we know each other really well. So uh-huh. we can kind of um, cut through a little bit of red tape um, and make things run a little bit more smoothly. Yeah. Um, but uh, a lot of the times, you know, the writing and the art are done uh, on such different planes that either you can be super involved with each other or, you know, like um, uh, Amy and I, when we do arcs together, it's mm-hmm. we really don't we really don't talk yeah. um, because I know that she's going to do much better at making my words look good than I could ever tell her to do. Oh, yeah. Um, and uh, it all it all totally depends on the the artist and um and how much control the writer wants to have which with me is not a whole lot mm-hmm, mm-hmm. unless there's like this one thing in the story that has to be told yes and... occasionally i do that i got a little i did a scooby <laughs> i did a scooby d story for, <laughs> for dc right and it was about um a dog show okay and i really really wanted my dog in the comic <laughs> So for the first time in my writer career, I turned to the the one who was like, oh, and here's a picture of my dog. Could you put my dog in the comic? <laughs> and they did. There, so it was it was like the best. It was like the height of my career is getting my dog in this comic. That is awesome. Oh that is awesome. But other than that, I like to, the, other than that minute of insanity based on the love of my dog, mm-hmm. um, I like the artist to do whatever they, they feels right. And then... Um, once they're done with uh, pencils, they come back to uh, the writer mm-hmm. and the editor, and we mm-hmm. go through them and make sure everything is copacetic, and mm-hmm. nine out of ten times it is. Awesome. You've also done some work on a very crazy property that Pixel Kitties loves to death, which is Monster High. Yes. Um, so in the Monster High universe, uh, what kinds of things does that universe bring to your typical high school story? Right, because you wrote this. You wrote this story, which was a, a a graphic novel about a love interest thing. So, what 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 does that universe bring into that you can write in that's just not typical to your typical high school romance story? Um, you know, in Monster High, uh, it's it's pretty interesting because um, when you really get down to it with with them, it's about uh, being able to accept everyone 
no matter how, and I, I don't want to say weird, but like, <laughs> like it, it comes down to, you know, it's a bunch of monsters in mm-hmm. a school and they all have, you know, strange things about them, but it's almost a non-issue. Right. Um, so I think what's really cool about that is, is the fact that, um, uh, it kind of shows in a very almost literal sense of how, how different, different people or monsters can, can, be. can, can be and get yeah. along just, just fine. And, uh, uh, I've always really liked that about monster high. That's cool. I actually never caught any of it because it's just, it hasn't been on my radar. Pixel Kitties loves it. So, yeah, it's it's pretty cute. Yeah. There's um they have I think they have a YouTube channel where you can see stuff. But yeah, I did huh? one. I actually did two graphic novels for them. I think the second one's coming out in a few months. Oh, nice. Yeah. Something to look forward to, people. Um you've been to a few MLP conventions where we met actually. Yes. Um how are you finding the fan base? Are they different from your typical San Diego Comic-Con attendee? Um, they're amazing. Um I've uh you know, I've gone to San Diego for long long before I was in the business. Um, and I am, every time I go to an MLP convention, I'm completely bowled over by how kind and, uh, considerate and just generally excited the fans are. And it's a, a wonderful, it's a wonderful thing to experience because <laughs> a lot of time, um, in San Diego, or other conventions, you know, people can be extremely, it can turn yes. into like comic book guy yeah. and endless, endless horribleness, but every time at MLP, I've had nothing but fun and people who genuinely just love the property so much. And it's wonderful to be in that environment. It is. Um, what, what do you like to do for fun outside of this whole business of writing? Uh, Do you secretly go to Barnes and Noble and sign all the books you uh, (laughs) when no one is watching? No, um, I am probably like the most introverted. I could be a hermit. I really think. What? I really think so. Oh. It sounds really appealing to me. <laughs> when we met, you talked up a storm. I am. I'm really good once I get out. Okay. Um, getting me out is is a, is a whole other deal. Um, I really. I. I don't. Um, once my books are published, I. I never read them again. <gasps> I don't. I put them in a box. Put them in a box. And I. I send go. them to my mom. So, well, um, really. Yeah, and um, I don't I don't read them, hmm. but um, my my fiance does, and he okay. tells me that they're all okay. So Good. that's what awesome. I live for. But but I do I I, I like to go to movies. I like to um, knit. knit. Um, I when I was in LA, I did a little professional knitting for um, a couple of movies and television. <gasps> and um, yeah, I would like to do that kind of stuff and hang out with my dog and. Uh, that's pretty much the extent of it, but mainly a lot of knitting. Wow, cool. Um, last question before we go to commercial. If there was anything out there, mm-hmm. for anything, any property, anything, would it be novels, TV, cartoons, comics, movies, what would it be? Ooh. Um, Sky's the I'm, limit here. Just pick one. Uh, Muppets. Muppets. I would, do, I would do Muppets in a heartbeat or, or Hellboy. Ooh, Hellboy. <laughs> That'd be cool. I, I love them both. I love them both. Um, and I do, I have a prose novel that I'm, that should hopefully be coming out next year. So I've already kind of gotten to do my own thing. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So with that, people, we're going to go to commercial. <laughs> and, and when we come back from commercial, we're going to go over charity work. Or actually, no, first thing we're going to do is we're going to go over upcoming convention season. Then we'll go charity work. And then we'll get Screwball in the call. So all of you out there can ask all of your comic questions to this lovely lady. So stay right there. We'll be right back in about a minute and a half. Woo. Woo. (laughs) Are you tired of the high pressure sales tactics from rank amateur merchants? Are you tired of shady characters trying to take you and your bits for a ride? Would you really rather be shopping in a glorified flea market? Don't want to pay Canterlot prices? Avoid the Bucksters and the snake oil salesman. Come to Ponyville's oldest family-run business, Rich's Barnyard Bargains. You'll find us at the corner of Appleton Way and Stirrup Street. Look for the billboards. You can't miss them. There, you will find a warm, brightly lit, and friendly atmosphere. We have everything from alfalfa to zap apple jam. Look at all that stuff! Oh yes, we carry home improvement supplies and tools for all those last-minute weekend projects. And remember, 
Rich's Barnyard Bargains. If it ain't filthy, and it ain't stinking, then it ain't rich. That's right, ponies. If you have another disaster of any kind whatsoever, if your thatched roof catches on fire, if Derpy goes through your mailbox, if, you know, vinyl scratch wubs down your wall, go to Rich's Barnyard Bargains because they've got everything you need down there in Ponyville to fix whatever you've got. If you're, you know, a human, go to Osh. They got stuff too. But anyway, we're back with Heather Nuffer. Hello. Hello. So let me get my script up. And we'll see where we're supposed to be. Hmm. Excellent. Next. Convention season. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Here we are. Coming up. We have next Buck in the UK, Manchester, August 23rd, 24th. GM Barrow, Dave Polsky, Heather Breckel. Summer Sun Celebration Music Festival is August 22nd, which is the night before it starts. All your music, favorite music people will be there. Check their website. They're all going to be there. I think Mike the Microphone is going to be there. He's flying. It's going to be huge. Grand Brony Gala. August 15th, 17th, Tampa, Florida. Guests, Kathy Westluck, Michelle Krieber, Black Griffin, GM Barrow, The Brony Chef, and many more. The gala dance is Saturday night, so don't forget your finest. So go out there and have a nice ball, you know, ballroom dancing. It's awesome. You know, dress up really nice with a girl and go dancing. It's awesome. Trust me. Uh, Nightmare Nights, October 24th, 26th, Dallas, Texas. Guests, Tabitha, Britt McKillop. Amy Keating and Rogers, full papers, and this knucklehead right here will all be there. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, big announcement, DerpyCon South, September 20th to 21st in New Orleans. Guest just announced, Ingrid Nilsson, voice actress of Maud Pie, will be there. But not only that, not only that, they sent me this little tidbit of information. Also, a pass giveaway contest. One. Alicorn Pass, two sponsorship passes, and four weekend passes will be given away to get on this. You have to book your hotel room for the 99 bits a night with a con hotel before August 15th. You're in for those. Now, check derbycons.com for more info on that. Um, also, more cons coming up this year. Brony Can, Czechquestria in Czechoslovakia, Brony Fanfare, Sydney in Sydney, Australia, Luna Fest, Ponyville Cider Fest, which I was just announced as a guest there. I'll be there. Brony Scott in Scotland, of all places. Wherever you are on this big blue marble we live on, there's a pony con to go to. Be there. It's lots of fun. Uh, charity time, charity time, charity time. Ian and Claire, British Columbia SPCA. We're letting this one run another two weeks because we were stuck at BronyCon. We couldn't get the video up so people could get in on the prizes. So we're letting that one go another two weeks. We're already at 615 bits, but we can get higher. We can go higher with that. So get in on the prizes and go over to manlysbrony.com, click on a link, and give a couple of bucks. You're in on the prizes. Now that we've gone over 500 bits, you're in for the Ian and Claire autograph. Okay? Now, oh, excuse me. Uh... All the giveaways for that were five packs of the MLP card game, Candlelight Nights, given to us by Bot115, two dog tags, a brushable pony, and, of course, the autograph for over $500. Now, we move forward to Heather. Yes. Heather's charity is called the Gentle Barn Foundation. I'm going to read this little paragraph right here. <laughs> Giving children who are at risk of being absorbed into destructive lifestyles a chance to bond with animals accomplishes great good and not just for the children. By making people aware of animals as thinking, feeling beings, the need for treating all animals in a humane manner becomes second nature. Um, and with that, the need to treat our fellow man as well. There is a second benefit to bringing children and farm animals into contact with each other. Not only does this help guide children into compassionate lives, it also raises awareness that agricultural animals are in need of protection too. While pets and wild animals get the press for issues of ethical treatment, agricultural animals are often overlooked. The Gentle Barn Foundation is helping to close that gap, and we can help them with that, can't we? Yes. I sure hope so. I sure hope so. It's tell, a wonderful place. Yes. Tell um, us a little bit about it. Yeah, if anybody lives in Southern California, um, it's outside of Los Angeles. You can literally go there, um, and they take in all sorts of abused and neglected and um, given up uh, farm animals, also like uh, horses that used to be in television shows, and they also take in um, dogs and cats. 
um, who have been abandoned. Mm -hmm. And uh, it sounds it sounds like it'd be kind of a downer place, but it's one of the most um, inspiring and hopeful places I've ever been to. You can go in, um, you give all you give them is a donation, and mm -hmm. you get to go and you can feed you know, the horses, you can go and pet. They have all these goats that are so happy and wonderful. <laughs> and, um, you really can just go have a really great time. Um, they usually have really good cupcakes, uh, <laughs> and, uh, learn a little bit more about, um, sort of how different farm animals are treated and actually feel like you're doing some good. Um, they take all the money they get, mm -hmm. um, to go back into either feeding the animals, um, or upkeeping the farm. Mm -hmm. Um, they also bring in, as you said, at risk youth to kind of give them, um, a little bit of pride and to teach them that, um, all living things, uh, have the right to, a good life, including themselves. Awesome. Um, yeah, it's a fantastic, if, if Fluttershy had a charity, it would mm -hmm. be the General Barn. It would be the General Barn Foundation. <laughs> it, so It totally yes. would. Yes. Yes. We have, we actually have Fluttershy as the, the equestrian manticore fund. Nice. Actually, the equestrian manticore fund is, has her as a spokesperson. So awesome. for this one, so if you go over to manlysbrony.com, click on the link, give a couple bucks, then you're in for this set of prizes here. Another five sets of cards, packs, from bot 117 so five of those thanks bot um i got this how about this this is the mcdonald's luna toy still in the package Ooh. so we're gonna set that one for you then caridwin found this when we were actually out you know at home depot looking for stuff he found these which are peel and stick wall decals of the oh, ponies man. look at that I want those. isn't that cool 31 so cool. wall decals to go on your, it's, it's like you know, those the big old head things from sports, but you can put ponies on your wall. <laughs> so there's 31 of those in there. So that's for giving us anything. Now, we crack 500 bits. I think Heather's going to kick in. What do you think? Sure. Yeah. yeah I'd, be, I'd be more than happy to, to kick in some uh, signed comics. Signed comics. Yeah. Hmm. How about four of them? That sounds perfect. Done. Four comics signed <laughs> by Heather Breckel which will be in my hands probably in a couple of days because we're going to bust 500 bits on this easy. And so, yeah. um, I should add that uh, uh, I was lucky enough to have um, Peter Capaldi, who's <gasps> the new Doctor Who. The new Doctor uh, Who. Yes, uh, retweet the tweet about this show and um, also say that if anybody uh, sends him, tweets him and sends a picture of them actually donating, that he will give them a follow on Twitter. Um, wow. And if you also tag me on that, I would be more than happy to follow you as well. Look at that, folks. You can get the new doctor to follow you. And Pretty cool. And still be doing good for good for the animals. So get on it. So that would be great. Um, and with that, charity is over for the week. All of you people who are waiting for charity prizes, one, some of you haven't gotten back to me. Two, <laughs> I'm waiting for things to come to me from the guests. So I'm waiting for something to get to me from Charlotte. I'm waiting for something to get to me. From somebody else I got I had to pick up a new autograph from Kazumi Evans because the one that she mailed me got ruined by my mailman thank you very much oh, no. yes but I saw her last weekend got a brand new one awesome not a problem so we're gonna talk we're gonna take care of that one but I'm still waiting for Charlotte to get me the stuff that she promised so as soon as that gets here that will be going on, on mail so if you don't haven't gotten something from me send me an email dustymanlingsporting.com and we'll get everything taken care of because of course I'm moving <laughs> And it's all in boxes. I'll find it and we'll get it out there. Um, so with that, you know what you need to do for me, Heather? Hmm. You need to give a call for Screwball. He's your son. All right. Screwball. Screwy. Where are you at? Yo. Oh. oh. There he is. We knew he'd show up. Yep. <laughs> yep. He's just sitting there waiting. That'd be kind of bad <laughs> if I didn't show up. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it, it, you could always be off gaming with somebody and like Mr. Q. Okay, I've never done that once. Forget those rumors that people think I have. <laughs> because, but I do last minute gaming. I'm not he even does. Kidding. He I does do last like minute gaming. Last ten minutes till show, and they're like, "Okay, I'm closing everything down." Yes, closing everything down. <laughs> How you doing, buddy? I'm doing awesome. How are y'all guys? Sweet. Wow, Wonder. I said y'all. Y'all. That's terrible. <laughs> y'all. Yeah, the Americans are doing bad things. We too. all are awesome. <laughs> no, it's, it's not the deep fried Twinkies that are affecting you at all. No. no. Oh, yeah, yeah. Those are good, though. They're yes. so good. They're yes, awful. They are. They're good. Every, so every Friday, me and my friend Logan do deep fry Fridays. And yeah. and we kind of had the meat sweats last time. So it's like, okay, we need a break from this before we have strokes. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. 
So yeah. with that, I'm sure we have plenty of questions. Plenty. 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 Yes. Uh, so this is from Trailblaze. This is for you, Heather. Uh, question is, what is your favorite reference you put slash scene in the comics? Ooh. Good question. Um, my probably my favorite. I have two favorites, and I don't think anyone has noticed them. Oh, really? <laughs> um, I do have um, in I think it was in the Bookworm arc. I have uh, uh, Rainbow Dash say uh, we're not using the Z word, which is um, from I, I love anything Edgar Wright, Simon Pegg, uh -huh. Nick Frost. So it's actually from Shaun of the Dead. Oh, oh, that's right. Oh, 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 oh I got to find um, it. I'm opening um, the book right now. Where is it? Yes. So I'm that's, the book. they're my favorite, like, filmmakers most of the time. Oh, the so I put that in there. And then I also, um, in the pyro arc, mm -hmm. uh, I have uh, Fluttershy's friend is Gil, right. and, um, which is a reference to What About Bob? Um, oh. And she also, she also says this whole bit about baby steps, which... <laughs> which I don't blame I anyone for not my obscure what about get it. references. Yes, I get it. Oh, well, I'm trying to find the Z. So, you, next question. I'll get up around the next one. Um, so this is from Whoalicious. For you, Heather, uh, do you follow fanfics, and do you ever use any of those ideas to inspire your writing? How about no? No, <laughs> don't. Um, I, I am easily influenced, um, so I tend to uh, not... I don't read anybody else's stuff usually um i'll i'll usually skim through katie and andy's stuff or <laughs> or if somebody i know has a mlp comic i'll i'll give it a go but yeah i don't even read my own stuff because i'm worried ah yes no influences no but the, be... the fanfic community is really amazing it's huge it's huge are you kidding me and and um i got to do a panel with a few of them uh, um at ever free uh -huh. and so they're so smart and so know their business it's amazing it's crazy some of the things i come up with oh yes i never really read any myself but uh crazy i i i get a lot of a lot of people tell me about some of the craziest things yeah i'm sure i mean fallout equestria is like what a billion words it's now. It's huge. Goodness. It's really? huge. Oh my God. Yeah. So yeah, somebody started doing a, a, a fanfic about Fallout the game uh -huh. and Equestria as a crossover. And oh now God. now it's two books this thick. You know, it's, it's, I swear it's over a million words. It's <laughs> huge. And everybody, is. everybody's drawing, everybody's writing side arcs and it's, it's completely gone off the rails. It's huge. See, that's awesome. Yeah. That's really awesome. I'm a huge Fallout fan, but I'm trying to pry myself away from ponies with Fallout because Fallout's very, very dark. Very dark. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know if I want ponies to be put in with that. <laughs> um, uh, so, nice. Brandon's the next question. Um, where did I put you? Oh, here we go. Uh, this one's from Marby Z. Question for all in your opinions. Should the main six and... <laughs> Okay, I can't you know this one he put. Should the main six and humane six ever meet in the comics, and should it result in an awesome arc? And, and so he, 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 what he's saying is that the, the, the main six ponies and the human mm. main six right. should ever meet. <laughs> in the comics. In the comics. And would, that, would that be awesome or not? That would be... To tell, to tell you have to, to address a lot of, you know, a lot space of space-time space -time continuum going on. <laughs> um, and on top of that, we haven't seen human the real human twilight yet true we could go we have, EQD, we have not right? met her we've oh, met yeah, our twilight right. in the human world but we have not met human twilight yet true she is not yeah. she doesn't go to canter lot high she goes somewhere else yeah she, she, she probably goes to princess celestia's school for magical unicorns or wherever university but no magical human beings magical human beings there you go. <laughs> yeah. yeah it would be i think it would be really interesting to do yeah, but oh, yeah. it would it would never, it would never be approved no. by us. <laughs> no, no, we're gonna keep those titles separate. No, you know what? it's it's canon now. Uh, Hogwarts is an EQD universe or EQG, and that's where that's where Twilight is. That's where at. Twilight's it's going. Yes, Hogwarts. She, she's she's at Hogwarts. So I can see well, it now. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Next, um, assistance from Mason Elcat. Uh, for you, Heather, I know you. I know you can't talk about future books, but what was one of your favorite storyline you ran in the series? Oh, um, yeah. Currently, um, that I that I wrote or 
read? Uh, wrote anything. Okay. Oh, well, definitely. Um, the nightmare rarity was was probably my favorite thing that I wrote. Um, it was a tremendous amount of work, <laughs> um, but the I would say I probably had the most fun with the bookworm arc. Um, that one came really easy and was just never ending fun. I didn't have to wretch my head too much trying to work out plot details. <laughs> Well, yeah, there's, there's no, you don't have to because it's all fun, right? It's right, like, right. Well, here's, it came here's, naturally. Here's, yeah, here it came naturally. Here's Rainbow Dash, you know, fixing a stick of gum to, to, to fix everything, right? Right. And, Completely and... ruining the story. Rar, rar, <laughs> rarity goes into a romance novel. I mean, come on. It, it, writes, it writes itself. It writes itself, yeah. With, yes. with the, the Nightmare Rarity arc, yes. I definitely, I had like charts and graphs of emotional arcs going yes. on Where for different characters. Where they all characters. go, yes. So it was, it was a an, an labor-intensive process. Yeah. Yeah, and, and doing the, the Daring Do Rainbow Dash bit, which was like five pages, I loved Okay. Like, oh, I'm a Rainbow Dash fan anyway, but that's our, our excuse me, a Rainbow Dash any Daring Do fan. So as soon as more Daring Do for me is awesome. Yeah, I, love I would like to have an entire Daring Do comic. Make it I happen. Love that too. Make it happen. Okay, I'll I'm, get not, on. I'm not forcing you or anything. I just <laughs> I'd, I'd like to have it. So make it happen. He's he's forcing you. <laughs> I'll bring up important points on my next phone call. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I work cheap. I'll write it myself. All right. Uh huh. Next. <laughs> Everyone's constantly asking this for you, Dusty. What? I'll just bring up Flair's because uh, Flair Cobra's because his what? came first. Um, Dusty, what went through your mind when that quilt that's currently right behind you hit twenty thousand dollars? Well, what went through my mind was the gentleman who bid on this is my roommate and my landlord, Kerdwin, and he's in the front row and he's in a bidding war with the with the gentleman in the back, and it just keeps going up and keeps going up and keeps going up and keeps going up, and I keep thinking. Dude, weren't we just talking about putting a bar in the house? <laughs> it's like, and you're spending twenty thousand dollars on a quilt. Wow. I love, I love the man. He's awesome. I mean, this is awesome for charity. You know, I really do. But it's like, now I don't get my bar. <laughs> but hey, you get an amazing backdrop. I get an amazing yeah. backdrop. Yeah. Sweet. Amazing. And I, you know, what? I can, I can drink next to my backdrop. That's not a problem. And you know, we'll, get, <laughs> we'll, we'll put the bar in. Some actually, the bar is supposed to be right here. You see, right in front of the camera. This is where the bar is going to go. So I'm actually sitting. Behind the bar. I'm your bartender tonight. So as soon as the bar gets in, it's going to live right here. But yeah, this is beautiful, actually. Wow. Wonderful. That's awesome. I had no idea that, yes. that you were that close to the quilt. I yeah, the, the, quilt, the quilt is behind me. Right now, I'm touching the quilt. I'm actually <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm touching Lauren Faust's name right now. And she signed it. <laughs> I'm getting chills. Stop it. You're making me jelly. <laughs> chills. 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 Yes. <laughs> I'm touching it. Next. You're making the whole audience jelly. <laughs> um, so oh, wait, is... wait, wait, wait. What? Okay, I stopped touching it now. Okay. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Next! Uh, so this one is from Mike M. Uh, for you, Heather. Um, you write for a lot of the series. Which was the most challenging? Um, yeah, definitely the uh, Nightmare Rarity was, was most challenging. Um and uh, just in from the writing perspective, um, probably in terms of editing and getting everything um, approved by Hasbro, it was probably the uh, Pirates arc was um, crazy. Was a lot of um, back and forth because they definitely had some very specific ideas <laughs> of what they wanted to to have to in accomplish. there. So yeah. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of back and forth about that shoo one. Shoo be doo, shoo shoo be doo, shoo be doo. <laughs> oh no. Shoo. <laughs> Uh, Am I right? Uh, mm -hmm. Yes. That's, that's what I thought. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. They're setting something up. I know it. <laughs> Next. Ooh, so this is from Parchment Scroll. Uh, for you, Heather, is there a particular type of story that you prefer to tell? Um, uh, the more epic, the better. Um, okay. I'm a, a big fan of really epic stories. I kind of have a hard time with slice of life stuff. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, what that says about me is probably not that great. <laughs> um, I would, I'd wager that's some kind of escapism spraying out. But um, but anything anything epic um, where I get to have my funny little bits mm -hmm. is is probably where I like to be. Which means a daring do script would be awesome for you. Yes, like my I I adore daring do. Um, 
mainly because I'm a gigantic Indiana Jones nut. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, um, yeah, to do a whole comic would be splendiferous. Wouldn't it be cool? Oh. I'm like, I'm, I'm giddy. Just thinking. <laughs> thinking that there could be like a five-issue miniseries of Daring Do. That would be really rad. Wouldn't that be rad? Mm-hmm. Hasbro, get on it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm smiling right now, but I will send you a letter. I will. Next. Hasbro probably hates me by now. Well, no. I don't no. Think so. They're nice. Yeah. 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 MK Tune is awesome. I love him. Awesome guy. Next. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Um, oh, this one's from. Um, no, I think this was already referenced before when you two were talking, but I'll just bring it up anyway. Uh, this one's from Kyle Tonerella. Mm-hmm. Question for Heather. Uh, what were some of your favorite references to write for in the two part uh, book remark? Oh, specifically in the bookworm. Gosh, what did we have in there? Oh, here. I, I'll open it up right here. <laughs> you can tell I me. have it. Well, I know that, that Amy so, had yeah. some uh, really... Amy, I love how Amy had a Loki, a Loki pony a in Loki there. A Loki pony was in there. Um, and <laughs> When they go into the book, they actually go into Rapunzel. Yes. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. Which was rarity, of course. And, <laughs> and Pinky messed that up by becoming Peter or, uh, Robin Hood. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that was in there. Let's see mm-hmm. who else. Uh, wow, that was weird. Um, then Daring, that goes into the Daring Do arc, right in the middle of it. Daring Do actually appears in Ponyville. Let's see who else is in here? I'm looking. I'm looking. Let's see. <laughs> uh, there's a bookworm talking to them during the Daring Do arc. Uh, I don't see anybody in the background. Yeah, I don't think there's a lot of background ponies there. No, no. But. Um... I really loved writing the uh, the rarity romance. Oh yeah, the rarity romance! Oh my god, <laughs> I'd never written anything like that before, this, and this, I, this I is, found it extremely cathartic. This is great. She would wait forever by the sea, a sea of longing <laughs> for the return of her dearly departed Francisco. <laughs> Sheesh, Francisco. rarity! A romance novel? That's about as scary as it gets. <laughs> but could it be? This handsome shadow looks so familiar. Wow, Rainbow Dash, you have such a handsome shadow. <laughs> Why, thank you, Pinky. My shadow works out. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, there's this gorgeous stallion with a beautiful mustache goatee. He's beautiful, He's isn't he? He's beautiful. It? And you could probably have a career in oh, writing no. romance novels, Dusty. It's pretty, your, your voice reading Oh, thank really you. Helpful. I'll read this last paragraph just so everyone can hear it. <laughs> he moved through the night like wistful velvet, bringing back every memory, every endless whisper. She knew he would never truly leave her. Even the dark brooding abyss couldn't capsize their love. Ooh. Okay, that's too much even for me, Rainbow. <laughs> that's too much even for me, Twilight says. It's over. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you. I'd, I'd Thank clap you. if I didn't have a phone in my Thank head. you. <laughs> are you using a phone for your speaker? Mm-hmm. I am. Actually, it sounds really good. It I sounds awesome, using... actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're, you're only the, actually, you're the third person who's used a phone. We had M.A. Larson, mm-hmm. who was actually walking his daughter. At the that time, was hilarious. Which was that hilarious. That was funny. And Bre- 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 talked through yeah. a plate in his head or something. Yes, and Brenda Crislow had was on a phone, but you're yeah. the third third person on a phone. It, it seems to work quite well. It seems to work quite well. Yes. Next. Uh, so this one is from Spec Farming. Uh, first, I want to thank you, Dusty, for being part of the bully, uh, bullying panel at BronyCon. Do it and again. He was no problem. He was wondering if. Uh, his panel submissions go through for Nightmare Nights. Would you like to do him the honor of joining him at bro- at the panel if it gets clearance? Of course. Of course. Not a problem. Put yeah. me down. Sounds goody. Yes. <laughs> I, I'm, 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 I'm of the opinion that if my pain and suffering that I went through as a child can help anybody else, it makes going through it that much more much easier. Yep. Okay. So if my stories can help you then my going through it was worth it. Okay. So if anybody asks me to do this, I'll do it. Okay. It doesn't matter where or when. If somebody asks, wants to know about my past and what I had to go through, and if it helps you, I will tell you. Okay. That's great, Dusty. Thank you. Next. Also, from uh, Spike, I'll also bring up, um, uh, is there, uh, for, for, uh, for you, Heather, if there mm-hmm. is a comic series that you would like to write for, which series would be and why? Well, yeah, we talked about that a little bit, yes. and I definitely, um, 
I definitely would want to write for um, if they brought some Muppets action Muppets. back. Muppets action, that, would, yeah. that would be great. Mm -hmm. um, a little Hellboy wouldn't be bad. Oh, yeah. And uh, I'm actually right now attempting to get on the Orphan Black series that they just announced because I'm kind of obsessed with that show. Mm. <laughs> nice. <laughs> what would be really cool is I actually did a comic adaptation of, you know, uh, Shaun of the Dead. Yeah. Or did they, already, did they do that already? I can't remember. Uh, they might have done one have back done in one. the day. Yeah. But they could do a series. That yeah. would be pretty great. Hot Fuzz was also an awesome movie. I love Hot <sighs> Fuzz. Those, those two guys are just extreme together. Yes. Wow. Yes. And anything they've done, I've loved. I always, I'm always dreaming that another movie will come out. Yeah. But they finished the Cornetto and Blood trilogy. So now, yeah. <laughs> now we have to wait. We have to wait. Come up with another comedy, guys, because you guys are good at it. Love it. <laughs> um, so this one is from um, Marby Z. Actually, since you brought since you brought Muppets, this kind of works out. A question for you, Heather. Did you see the latest Muppets movie? If so, what do you think of it? Um, I actually preferred it quite a bit to the last Muppets movie. Um, ah. I, I felt it was a little bit more... Muppety. Muppety. Um, yes. But uh, I'm... A huge, obviously, a huge fan of the originals, especially um, the Great Muppet Keeper. Mm -hmm. For for some reason, I often have an image of Charles Grodin singing in my head while Miss Piggy swims in a pool. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> uh, but I actually I, I quite enjoyed it. I went in not expecting to or to be let down huh? uh, because I like to soften the blow. <laughs> but uh, but I actually really really liked it. Mm, awesome. I'll take this time before we go on, to say that Screwball did not get me his footage this week. So therefore, there will not be a, you know, there, a screwy this, this, one this week. Put, this video that I'm currently working on yes. is the most work I've ever put in ever because it requires a lot of video editing. A lot of video editing. And so he did not get it done. So next, next show, in two weeks, we'll have a new, you know what, screwy. So stay on the edge of your seat for that. In two it's, weeks. it's so funny. Yes. I got help from my friend Logan. <laughs> cool. So just so if anybody was waiting for that, it's not happening this week. We'll have something else later in the show. But next. Ah, uh, so this one. Let's see here where I put it. Fudge cakes. Oh, there we go. So this is from Whoalicious. Uh, Heather, do you ever get to squeeze in a few camo? Uh, uh, do, do you ever get to squeeze in a few cameos? Um, uh, I, I'm definitely in an issue. Mm -hmm. I saw that. Um, and I, I'm in the last um, Nightmare Rarity mm -hmm. issue as a background pony. Um, and I think that's the, the only time I'm in. I wasn't too specific about getting cameos in because um, uh, I'm not the artist person. But there are some really good ones if you look really hard in, mm -hmm. in the Amy issues. Like you'll find like Sherlock in there. Um, and, uh, oh, think... actually what you notice in almost all of Andy's is the, uh, the spectators, I believe is what they're called. I always mm -hmm. forget yep. their names from, uh, from fringe. Yeah. Always yep. fringe references all the time. And when I show one of my friends, Jacob, who works with me, he's not much for ponies, but when he saw that, he really wanted to get into it. <laughs> <laughs> well, people do love their fringe, especially yes. Andy. Yes, he does. So that's that's the extra bonus of being an artist is that you get to entertain you can, yourself. You can do whatever you want in the comic, right. as long as you can get past Hasbro. <laughs> they won't know. They won't know. No, they will never know. <laughs> yes, GM Barrow actually snuck me in one of her books. Oh, really? Yes. Well, snuck oh. my OC in one of her books. So. Awesome. Yeah. So she's a sweetie. She's a sweetie. I love her. She's she's a, an old friend. Her her dad actually worked with Caridwin, my roommate. Who's an old no friend way. of mine? Yeah, that's how we know each other. My so like, world. Yeah, before we even knew that she wrote the books, it's like Barrow. I worked with a Barrow. Wait a minute, and we found out that she she was the daughter of the guy he worked for. <laughs> was oh, that's crazy. Yes. yes, seven steps to Kevin Bacon. But there you go. Well, that's better. That's better than mine. We just have the same editor on a book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, next. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Sorry, I was also answering questions on the RSC as well. I'm doing a lot of typing too. Mm -hmm. We're trying to avoid. Um, so this one is from um, <gasps> James, James Justice. Justice! 
resident superhero of Stay Brony, my friends. Hero, that <laughs> anti bully, that awesomely bad dude. Soggy milk. So, what, what, Jane, you took care of Soggy Milk this week, right? You took care of him? When he had the big laser death ray of Soggy Milk <laughs> that he shot up at the moon, right? Can, he was gonna, he was gonna make the moon into that. like this huge bowl of Soggy Milk, and you stopped that, right? You stopped it? Okay. Just wanna make sure. <laughs> What does what, yeah. what does James want to know this week? Uh, let's see here. So this one's for you, Heather. Now I know a lot of people. They really love the bookworm arc a lot. Yes. I've been getting a lot of questions on these. This yeah. one's uh, this one's from James to you, Heather. Um, so how did the process go for picking out what to parody in the bookworm story arc? Um, uh, it was really me sitting down and kind of thinking where the characters would naturally fit in sort of, you know, wide, widely known, widely loved um, tropes. tropes. And, um, and also kind of thinking of good gags that I could have within those that would, that would make it both fitting, but also kind of show how silly it was. Mm -hmm. So there, I had a few, a few ideas that didn't pan out. So I'm glad I finally rested on the ones that, that did. Cool. Well, that's good. Uh, it's a lot of planning involved. Oh, yeah, that had to be. Oh, yeah. James also likes to say thank you for writing the, dairy do the Daring Do in that story. Oh, good. <laughs> He's a huge Daring fan. Huge. Maybe we need to start a letter writing campaign. Yes, we must have a Daring Do miniseries. Daring Do miniseries. Yes. <laughs> and, and of course, Rainbow Dash is Captain Kirk. It's of like, course. Yes. yes. Absolutely freaking hilarious. <laughs> she had to. She has, to, she has to talk that way, though, right? Mm -hmm. you, you can't do that in comics. No, you have, you have to like hard. you have to have read it that way, right? Yeah. It's like, see, a little action really made this story shift into high gear. Yep. That okay. worm will be here in no time. <laughs> I like to imagine that everybody just naturally does yeah, that. Naturally. Does. Oh yeah. <laughs> and, and yeah, and the way she drew Rarity's hair like Uhura, it's like mm -hmm. it's funnier than heck. <laughs> So I love comics, people. You need to read more of them. Yes. These are the things you're missing. Yes. They're so good. That's uh, I honestly I I without a doubt I love reading the comics more than the show nowadays because they get you guys get to get away with things that the show can't. Yeah. And it's so much more. I guess like they they all they all have their special appeals mm -hmm. to them. Mm -hmm. Yes. Show has one kind of appeal. The comic has a different appeal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's why I love them for uh, either or. You get it. You get it. Yep, Thank yep. you. That's we wonderful. Absolutely. Next. Uh, so this is from Flair Cobra. If there was another pony that would have been taken by the nightmare, the nightmare, <laughs> who do you think it could have been? Ooh. Hmm. That would have really, I, you know, I think somebody that would have, there's two ways I think you could go other than rarity. And I think if, if Applejack got taken, it would be a really heart-wrenching kind of um, woeful story. And that would have been um, kind of... Downer. Yeah, it might have been too much. Too um, but then you could also have Pinky <laughs> get taken over, which, Whoa, would have, be... Whoa. which would have been like a crazy... You would have broke the universe. Right, exactly. Yeah, but then you it could... It might have been too much and, and not not have been able to have as great yes. emotional resonation. Yes. You could have had Nightmare Rainbow Dash. Yes. Because it, it would have been, one, one of the most popular characters in the series. It's sad to say, but she is. Mm -hmm. um, especially if you look at the merch. But oh yeah, it could have went Rainbow Dash because of self-confidence issues. Yeah, definitely. And definitely. then you could have wrote the whole self-confidence story. Yeah, um, yeah. she was actually the, the, the first one I had thought of. Mm -hmm. Um but at the time, I was also kind of like, well, you know, there's I love Rarity, and um, I didn't feel like she was kind of getting enough, uh, enough on the on the at least as much as I wanted to see on the show. Yes. So I thought it would be a great exercise. And it was for, it, it for was. me. <laughs> I mean, when when you think about it, Rainbow Dash was the safe choice, mm -hmm. whereas Rarity was the awesome choice. Well, thank you. Next, uh -huh. let's see here. Um, I'm seeing you. 
Uh, sorry, I'm also picking up questions. I normally am supposed to be reading through these. Um, <laughs> let's see here. Uh, oh, here we go. So this one's from Normal. Normal. It's, it's quite the normal. There movie. is no normal. <laughs> normal doesn't exist. Mm -mm. Remember that. <laughs> so, question for Heather. Are there any references you want to write in slash see in the comics? Ooh. Mm. Well, next time around, I pro I've started watching, like, a whole new set of TV shows. So <laughs> there will probably be a lot, um, a lot more um, new things. I really would enjoy if there were uh, uh, some clone type action, some orphan brown, <laughs> uh, orphan, orphan black, black. Uh, clone action going on would be kind of neat. I would, I would just like to have somebody, somebody talk in the background to Mr. Ed. <laughs> That's all I want. And have Mr. Ed not say anything. Uh, Wouldn't that I'm be funny? I'm surprised nobody has done that. Nobody's yet. done that yet. Right, Mr. Ed is sitting in the background with a, you know, he's in the in his, you know, half door, and he's got his head sticking out, and like Pinky's just talking to him, and he just says nothing. That would, would that be, be awesome. funny? That would be awesome. That would be hilarious. Uh -huh. now, I don't know if this is done yet, but has there ever been a Where's Waldo reference? Oh, I don't think so. No, I don't think so. I always wanted to see a Where's Waldo reference. <laughs> Because it would work. It would work it would. with those comics. It he's just work. like yes. seeing way in the distance, and he's just sitting there with a cane. <laughs> <laughs> but if you, if um, if any of the writers had uh, the artist draw a Where's Waldo type scene, yeah. you would never hear from us ever again ever. because the artist would come and murder us in murder. our sleep. <laughs> but honestly, they've gone, they've gone away a lot they, of stuff they, like they, that. They've done. Well, actually, they just did. You know, in in the uh, Sombra, the Good King mm -hmm. Sombra arc. Where Andy did this beautiful two-page spread with the, the the trees and the little notes and the everything. Oh my god! Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was Andy gorgeous. Was really, yeah, I was looking through the first issue of that arc um, mm -hmm. very recently, and uh, he had some really amazing, amazing. It was like hammer horror esque yeah uh, landscapes in there and mm -hmm. backgrounds that were really rad. Yep, loved it. There was uh, no. I can't remember what Jacob called it, but you know the part where the two worlds start colliding, and it shows all the yeah. different ponies and their and their and their parts. Yep. Mm -hmm. well, there were, uh, I I can't remember what that was referencing. Jacob did tell me, but there was uh, a part that was actually very awesome for Fringe. I didn't even notice that he did. Is that you know how Fringe has the two universes as well? Mm -hmm. Well, you see one pony, a a a a, a mare who has blonde hair, and then you see another one looks just like her, except for she has red hair, and then you're like, that's fringe. Oh, <laughs> and Jacob yeah. pinpointed almost instantly. He's like, you, you do see this, right? They're like, I did not see that. Not see that. <laughs> when you're not looking for it, you don't see no. it. No. You don't see it. That was good. Yep. Um, Loved it. Uh, so this one is... Oh, so this one is from, okay, you, you can't physically say this. Uh, it's just G-G-B-H-T-G. Yes. <laughs> Give it to you. Give it to you. <laughs> it's the question I've always wanted to hear. It's like EBITDA. <laughs> yeah, let's go into business. EBITDA. <laughs> For you, Heather, uh, I found the, Jer uh, 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 Jer the Jeremy, is it Jeremy? And Larry of the Nightmare Forces, hilarious. Yes. How did you come up with the idea for them? Um, uh, it was a little Statler and Waldorf, um, from the Muppets. Yeah. Uh, like uh. I, I knew there needed to be, um, kind of a, a comic relief there. Um, and, um, I really love anytime there's kind of bumbling assistance to someone with power because they provide not only, um, a, a few chuckles here and there, but they also provide, you know, important story stuff and a little bit of humanity within it kind of gives you the hope that you know even if stuff goes down with the bad guy that mm -hmm. there can also be these other characters who can be saved yes 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 I'm looking I'm looking up I'm looking in my comics I'm not ignoring you guys I'm looking for the things we're talking about you're transfixed by comics I'm no what I'm doing is I'm pulling out the comics to show the camera the things we're oh. talking about because I have all the comics sitting here <laughs> so I'm looking for the, the picture that we were talking about. So keep going, keep going. Next question. Okay, uh, so this one is from Mason Alcat. Heather, do you think we'll be seeing some comic slash show crossover in season five? Ooh, um, I I honestly do not 
No. And if I, I knew, I probably could not tell you. She, nope, nope, <laughs> no, 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 no spoilers. No spoilers <laughs> around here. I'm begging we're, we're, for that. We're, to we are happen. not. We are not getting this show shut down by Hasbro. No, no. Not um, at, at the moment, from what I know, uh, uh, there's nothing major yes. planned. Um, I know Hasbro by design kind of keeps yes. us um, separate. Um, just for the reasons you said, you know, yes, uh, we can kind entities. of go different areas that the show can't. We do know that our good friend GM Barrow is writing an episode. Yes. Season five. We know that. Mm-hmm. So, no book crossover, but she's writing an episode. We, yep. I can't wait to see. I know it's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually very excited for the hundredth episode. They already been yes, the hundredth episode some is gonna be really huge. cool things, <laughs> and it's gonna be huge. That now the uh, uh, um, what is it? Spoilers. Plug your ears if you have to. Right okay. here. I'll give you Wait a, a second. Minute. I have speakers in my ears and my my fingers on my speakers, so I'm still hearing. Do it. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, uh, uh, there is the uh, that they said that there was going to be a bit uh, a bit more uh, of the background ponies. They yes, said. yes, that's what I'm, Which, I'm. That's what I've been always hoping for. Is that one episode where the girls go off and, and chaos ensues, but instead of going after the chaos, the camera follows the background ponies and what happens to their life mm-hmm. while the girls actually save a question. They go do their thing. They go yeah. do their thing. It's like what happens to the background ponies. It's like yeah. Well, they did say that Coco Pamela is returning. Yes, which I'm Coco's so pumped back. for. Um, and cool. yeah, I, I want to see that. I want to see them need, to even a bunch of them to have voices. And, we need some Bab Seed. We need some uh, Coco Pamela. You know. Yeah, yeah. I was down in LA a few weeks ago. Oh, gosh, now like a month ago, and had lunch with or brunch with those guys, and they were all very excited about this season coming five. season. So I think you guys are in for excited. good stuff. Yes, quite excited. Oh yeah, Next. very excited. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. Yeah. Uh, one second. I need to read through this one again because I'm making sure I'm getting this right. Uh, I'll, I'll skip that and, and read it through again. Um, so this one is from. Oh, fudge case. So this is from Marby Z. Uh, okay. Question for Heather. Hasbro approved an MLP slash Transformers crossover arc in the comics. Would it be challenging for you to write? <laughs> well, yeah. That would be awesome. But yes, it would be extremely it's challenging. challenging. Yes. Um, I know a lot of people who that's their dream project, but I think it would be unbelievably hard. Unbelievably hard. hard. I know. Um, I know. Uh, oh, oh, why did I just lose his name? Tony? Tony. Yeah, Tony. Tony he Bruce. loves he loves, loves Transformers. Transformers. Yes, oh. he does. I love his covers. Oh my goodness. He does it. He does it. He, does it. That he needs to do the interiors. Yeah. yeah. And, and have to draw all those straight lines. Yeah. Well, he's done like three different covers for three different Transformers. Yeah. They're fantastic. They're great. Are yeah. you kidding me? He's forever. Tony Tony's like hard it is to draw straight lines. Tony's so. like in my top 5 of comic artists right now. Yeah, he's amazing. He needs him. to he needs to be allowed to have free range un- to do stuff. Yeah, and do like um, he and I were talking about how great it would be to team up on a yeah. four issue arc. I mean, I actually got his rain boom tattooed to my chest. No, you didn't. I have did. It. I did too. Oh, I did well, too. That's, that's awesome. Because yes. and Tony's a great guy in real life, yeah. so Next. all works out. So this is from Dirty Ken. Uh, to you, uh, Dusty. Mm. He says all. He says congrats on the twenty-seven K raise of BronyCon. Thank you. And also, uh, what was the Dorito of choice when you crashed Bony Palooza? <laughs> what was the Dorito of choice when I crashed Bony Palooza? Well, I think I think it was um, the the original nacho cheese Doritos, <laughs> which is very hard to come by nowadays, seeing as I have all these weird Doritos flavors. It's like. I'm sitting there. I take I take Tarby's Doritos up on stage. I sit behind the guys and just start eating Doritos. And they look. They finally find me. And they look. They're doing stuff on stage. They turn around, and look at me, and they go, "What are you doing here?" I said, These are great seats, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> right here on stage eating Doritos. Oh my goodness! It, it was hilarious. It was hilarious. Yep. Oh hey, yo, wait. Oh Joe, uh, is that you, Joe? I think Joe oh. Stevens. Joe Stevens is calling in from Equestria, the desk in Equestria. Right now. So we're going to go to the desk. We're going to go to the news desk outside of Ponyville in Equestria, and we will be back in just a minute and 40 because he's got something for you. Breaking news from Equestria. Go nowhere. Thank you, Dusty Cat. 
This just in, Zakora has been arrested for illegal drug trafficking. What may be a surprise to no pony, considering Zakora has ample supply of poison joke and beans, which are, of course, the magical fruit. Zakora has been indicted on charges of trafficking hallucinogenic compounds capable of creating psychotropic visions and deus ex machinas. While Zakora has long sold compounds and burning ducks that have various medicinal purposes, from curing cutie pox to having cheap amulet knockoffs, when Zakora delivered Princess Twilight Sparkle a potion that would allow her to see into the distant past, she delivered a potion with such a psychedelic mixture, it caused Twilight to actually feel like she'd traveled into the past. This is not only a psychologically damaging experience, but it is a lazy way of delivering exposition. Already, ponies are seeking out this potion and using it to see into their own distant past. While Twilight's vision was suitable for advancing her plot, when Rainbow Dash drank the potion and looked into her past, she saw nothing but horror. Zakora has responded to these allegations, here quoted as stating, This is not some drug to be had. With so much backstory to deliver, you should be glad. Even this may be a vision of the past, so I ain't even mad. Zakora has been sentenced to being absent for no less than 24 episodes, with the possibility of returning in season 5, so long as she stops selling her magic beans. I'm Joe Stevens, and this has been a news break from the Equestrian Inquirer. Back to you, Dusty Cat. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. Thank you for that news break. Can you believe it? Zakora arrested for drug trafficking? <laughs> I mean, amazing. I should have laughed that at is that. Just, that's just, hilarious. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Oh. Oh, I'm sure she'll be out for good behavior. I mean, they can't they can't live without her potions anyway. So mm -hmm. it'll be, it's just a misunderstanding. It's just a misunderstanding. She'll be out next week, I swear to God. <laughs> so we're back it's with Heather. Disappearance. Yes, we're, we're back with Heather. And we're going to run right down to the end of the show. We have some time left, so let's do it. Let's more questions. My dear sweet Celestia, that was hilarious, Joe. Oh, my Lord. Um, uh, okay. I'm just trying to gain my myself. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Uh, so this one, uh, this is from Pencils. Uh, question to you, Heather. Uh, Pencils is also a comic book writer, Pencils, and a freelance writer. Mm -hmm. And he has a question for you. Uh, when when writing ponies, do you draft out the act structure or any other or any other drafts before writing, or do you prefer to just dive into the story? Um, I tend to well in in comic books, uh, we have to submit a pitch, um, which is generally, at least if you're me, uh, really detailed um, in order to get it past uh, both ID. <laughs> Ooh, my dog barked. <laughs> um, past IDW and uh, Hasbro. So, uh, Woo! I, yeah, he's a loud barker. Um, so we do the pitch, and then I go straight from the pitch. A lot of people do um, what are called page by page, where they will um, write out what's going to happen on each page, because in comics, everything's so tightly condensed and you have to be really careful about page turns and um you know how many panels for the artist and stuff like that um but i tend to be a little bit on the uh carefree side <laughs> and i write until i'm done and then i snip out parts that um didn't amount to what i needed them to uh then i feel like i can kind of curate the things that are the best and uh have a story that's really full without kind of holding in my creativity if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Makes sense to me. Because I've done yeah, it before. It does. I've done it before. <laughs> yeah. I write until it's all out. And then cut it back. And then you cut it back. So it because I, I feel like, you know, when you're in the moment, at least for me, a lot of people it's not that way, but at least for me, the best creativity comes when I'm writing and when I'm really on a roll. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't want to not have that moment because I so meticulously yeah. planned out the story. Yeah. Don't, don't pull it back. Write everything. Right. And, and then... Look at this forty-seven page document and go, I need to squeeze this into twenty-eight pages. That happens to me quite often. <laughs> and then just start yeah. cutting things out. What 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 is the main arc of the story? What are the main points you have to make and what are the main scenes of those points? And then all of a sudden yeah. it just makes it just makes itself. Yeah, and then you're lucky, you know, um, to have really great uh, uh, you know, editors. Bobby's mm -hmm. an amazing editor and um, I'm lucky enough that uh, my fiance is a has won Eisner's for editing, so he always gets there. You to, go. <laughs> he gets to look at my stuff before anybody else, and yes. usually helps me out. So yes. I'm a lucky lady. Yes, yes, you are. Next. 
<laughs> so this one is from uh, Lord Silverhoof. Um, a question is to all, what would you like to see referenced in the show? Referenced in the show. Anything Maybe. from TV, movies, comics. Oh. Um, novels. Hmm. <laughs> Everything. You know, in my pie in the sky, because I would really love that my good friend Stan Sakai could get another bump to have mm -hmm. a, a samurai or oriental storyline in My Little Pony. Say, <gasps> say, say, say this, okay? Heather, uh -huh. cover your ears because you can't hear this because you might have to have to write it someday. But, <laughs> okay, say this. The changelings are actually oriental. Oh. And their entire, their entire civilization is based on Edo period of Japan, which is actually a fan fiction that you can't read. But anyway, say they do that. Right, and then the ponies have to go, or Princess Celestia has to go on a dipl diplomatic mission to the changelings because the changelings are dying and they need help from Equestria. Right? Aww. And then you have this whole, you know, Shogun as ponies. Mm -hmm. Right. I can see a Shogun miniseries. If any, if any of you kids haven't seen the Shogun miniseries from the seventies, go watch it because it's awesome. Yes. Yes. So Shogun done with ponies. I can see it. That would be great. I yes. love I love all of the old Ronin stuff. Anything yes. with Tashira Mifune. Oh yeah, pretty pretty great. Oh, yeah. That'd be awesome. Yes, I'm a samurai. Have you seen uh, uh, Twelve Assassins? Yes. <gasps> my that's like a blood so fest. Awesome. Like no. Oh my god, it's so awesome. <laughs> oh, I just took my ear out. Oh my god, it's awesome. It gets it gets to the point where where yes. um, it's that level of blood where you just yeah. start kind of start laughing. Yeah, but it's like it's gone like through the all beautiful the, the beautiful samurai movies of old brought in full living color. Yes. With with the, the actors who did it back in the day, it's mm -hmm. like if you haven't seen Twelve Assassins, you now have an assignment. People, <laughs> go see that. It's on Netflix. You have no excuse. Really, it's beautiful. It's, it's it's it is very beautiful. It's a beautiful movie. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I actually recently pitched a um, a Japanese <gasps> nuanced um, MLP comic. <gasps> I'm excited. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to happen. Or I have not, goosebumps. Though. Goosebumps. See that? Goosebumps. <laughs> but but that's why I'm excited that you actually want something. Like I'm excited. That. Yes. And I can Huge Sam. I've been, I've been collecting Izagi Ojimbo since like '89. Cool. Okay. I have like the first episode of Zagio Jimbo when he was an albedo and that comic's worth 500 bucks. But anyway, it's just, yeah, I have, I have all of it, all of them. I love it. I love the comic. But anyway, <laughs> I'm off on a tangent. I'm sorry. Back to MLP. <laughs> I'm known to do this. Next. Uh, so this one is from, uh, uh, actually also from Lord Silver here. If I want to bring this one up too. What celebrity would you like to see in the show as a voice? Ooh. Oh. Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> yes. Yes. No, we, we've already talked about this. You know, I know what mine is. Uh -huh. How about, Heather, you pick one before we tell you ours. Oh, gosh. Um, hmm. Who's somebody who has a really, a really good yes. voice? You know who I'd, I'd really like just off the top of my head? I'd love it if Amy Poehler came on. <laughs> Ooh, that'd, be, yes. that'd be hilarious. She did a voice. That'd be a great. Amy Poehler as Pinkie Pie's sous chef. Yeah. That'd be funny. Mm -hmm. um, I've always thought that Star Swirl the Bearded should be Ian McKellen. Oh, that'd be beautiful. Or or Patrick Stewart. Yeah. One or the other. Just so okay. Patrick Stewart would be great because he could play off Discord. Right? Him True. and John Delancey going back and forth again. <laughs> Wouldn't that be cool? We'll do a hit we'll do a history episode where Star Swirl the Bearded is actually on camera in the actual TV show. And we do a history piece where Discord is it, like messes around with Star Swirl the Bearded and it's Patrick Stewart. Definitely. Get on it, Hasbro. <laughs> Come on. I'm thinking about it. Yeah. I'm making a lot of demands this show. I'm s i have gone into a new house and I've got a new I've got a new sense of pride and in, in, You've in, got rights. I've, I've got rights, damn it. <laughs> I know what I want. Next. Um Um Sorry. Um, let's see here. Uh, actually, you know what my, mine is? What? Because I honestly, I was, I, was, I was trying to remember who it was. Liam Neeson. Liam? Oh, <laughs> that'd be good. Because he has a God's voice. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty good one, too. Yeah. 
Uh, so this is from RBZ. Question for Heather. Uh, are you currently writing any of the major upcoming issues? If so, will there be any, will, will there be any part of an arc? Ooh, um, I am not at this very moment, am I? Um, uh, we've definitely talked about me coming back, um, and I have signed up to do an issue at least um, at the beginning of next year, I think. <gasps> Um, so, <laughs> so I will definitely be back. Um, we, and we've talked a lot about me doing another, uh, four issue arc. Um, it's more kind of my bad at this point. Uh, I, I know. I feel like I, I could just pitch that now, dude. Pitch, pitch it. Pitch it. <laughs> four issue um, daring do arc. That would be awesome. Yeah. I, I just, I literally have not had, um, enough time, uh, to, to pitch. Well, you know what? That's awesome for you because you are working, and we love that. I work a lot. You work a lot. <laughs> so as long as as long as an independent artist has work, good on you. Yeah. You know, you'll come back when you have time, and we will be here waiting for you. Yeah. Well, I'm excited to get back. Um, uh, I think it's always good to have you know new people come in and yeah. uh, have their ability to tell new stories mm -hmm. from a new point of view. So mm -hmm. uh, it'll be nice to come back and. Join everybody again. Yes. But what's really cool is like that GM Barrow's three issue Daring Do set is coming out in a month. Mm -hmm. And then having you pitch a Daring Do four, four episode, a four book arc at the beginning of next year would just slot right in there. That would be beautiful. That would be beautiful. <laughs> beautiful, baby. <laughs> I'm on it. I'm on it. You know what time it is, though, Scurry? It's that time. It's that time. It's that time for that one awesome question. That our guest gets to ask of us. Ooh. Yeah. An any question I Any want? question at all. If you oh. want to ask it, ask us. Wow. Yeah. Oh, gosh. We should prepare them before we I know. I, know. I, I, should, I should, but it's more, it's more fun just to have them go, wow. <laughs> we get well, I want to ask you, like, a really poignant question. A poignant, poignant question. But knowing me, it'll a be, it'll be a question. Yes. mildly ridiculous. That's fine. Mildly ridiculous, ridiculous is even fun. We, we are well, mildly ridiculous, ridiculous. right? <laughs> so. If you got to be a character mm -hmm. in a Milo Pony episode, mm -hmm. all right, and you got to pair up as a, you had to be the sidekick, though. Okay. Which character, doesn't have to be the main, mm -hmm. but what character would you be the sidekick of? Mm, that's well, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> no because, one wants my answer, okay? Because they know what it I is. I know what your answer is. Go ahead. Say what your answer is. <laughs> it's bad. I'm not going to... Say okay. it. Say it. Okay. No, it's not AJ. I'm surprised people are thinking it's AJ. Don't no. you guys follow my Twitter? It, at and all? I, and click my images. You would see what the actual pony is. It's... Uh, it's it's okay. It's King Sombra. There we, yes, there we go. Wabner said it. Yes. Evil sidekick of Sombra. There Evil sidekick of King Sombra. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. But you know, for me, overhaul as my character's an earth pony, mm -hmm. and he likes to fix things. That's why he has crossed pistons on his flank. So he would probably be a sidekick of the entire Apple family, somewhere like right off of Sweet Apple Acres with with a you know with a, a forge and a blacksmith shop. And all he did was fix their carts all day. Very you know, cool. They were busting things and I would fix them. That's awesome. That would be my sidekick duties right there. I love it. Yes. So that's what I do. And with that, we are at the end of the program. Sadly. Aw, that went so quick. Sadly at the end of the program. So one thing I want to remind you guys is that we have a t-shirt, brand new t-shirt done by Trish over my shoulder right now at redbubble.com. Me giving Screwball a ride on the bike. Get this one. Wear it around all the conventions. We'd love to see you wearing it out there and giving us some support. Thank you very much for shirt. all your support. If you buy this shirt, we can stay on the air. So please please pick up a shirt. Um, one thing I want to bring up that happened just before the show went live. Um, Robin Williams was found dead just an hour and a half ago. Um it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking. Anybody who grew up, anybody who's my age or Heather's age and grew up with Mork from Mork and, you know, even if later, the genie from Aladdin and the Lamp, um, even his stand-up comedy um, mm -hmm. are just heartbroken about, you know, Robin uh, going. So uh, keep Robin Williams' family in your heart just yeah. for a little while because it's it going to be tough. 
it's shocking it's and shocking. really kind of puts a point on yeah puts um, a point on everything yep it's, uh, it can, even uh, even as you know big a star as Robin Williams is he had his demons and uh, and sometimes even when you seem seem to think you have everything um, it can all go away so hug your hug your loved ones kiss them tell them you love them mm-hmm. because it can all go away and with that uh, we're gonna head out of here big thanks. To Heather. Thank you, guys. That was wonderful. Day. Yeah, Screwball for doing everything he does. Thanks, Screwball. Cowboy Dave yeah. for making us look so good on the YouTube. I, I actually <laughs> cranked up I cranked up the frames per second on this show because we got better internet here. Hopefully it shows up, you guys. Hopefully I'm not all jaggedy this time. Um, EFN for giving us this wonderful program. Uh, Amy, my wonderful girlfriend, keeps me grounded. Care to win, who does everything. You know, I couldn't do this any show at all without him. Um, all our fans at BronyCon who stopped me every two seconds and made me dry <laughs> up a Sharpie. I swear to God, people, I had a brand new Sharpie, and by Sunday it was dry. Don't ask me how. I don't remember signing that many autographs, but dang, you all over the place. Love you all. Thank you very much for coming to see me at BronyCon. Um, come see me at the other conventions, Ponyville Cider Fest, um, Nightmare Nights. I'll be at those, so come see me there. Um, you'll see bro- You'll see Screwball. At Brony Can, go go get a uh, go get a autograph oh, from from Screwball. I'm so excited. Do it. I'm gonna, I'm being there for ten days. Ten days. Woo. Yeah. <laughs> I'm hey, yeah. Be hanging out at Vancouver for ten days with my very good friend Buttons and yeah. my very good friend Marjan, and yeah. oh, so excited. Looking looking for an apartment and a job probably. <laughs> yeah, most likely. Getting the, getting the heck out of Dodge. Because I because I am possibly moving there. So possibly. Yay. Yep. Take that opportunity. Go look and see what's there. So we're, with that, we're out of here. Guess what? In two weeks, hey, Screwball. What? Take a flying guess who we got in two weeks. Oh, no. Come Who'd on. you get? Who no. Did I, who did I, I get? I... You want? Hey, Screwball. Yes? You want a pair of wings? <laughs> Wait a minute. Okay, now I got two I got two characters for that. You just tell me. I. Who is it? That's right, people. M.A. Larson is yes. back. M.A. Larson's coming to the next show in two weeks with Penny Royal Academy. We're going to pump that. We're going to pump him being a story editor on season five. Got lots to talk about, so don't miss it. Two weeks. Larson! M.A. Larson! We're going to blame it on Larson. So with that, we're out of here. Peace. See you. Do, 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 do. Good, Good night, night, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. Good night, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. We hate to leave you, but we'll be back soon. Good night, sweetheart. Good night. Good night, sweetheart. Good night.